Hi everybody, so we're going to take a look at the Darwin wind turbine and where it came from and of course there's already an installation and that's in Skegness. The thing is, Skegness is 186 miles that way. But we're living in a wonderful world and it's a great time to be alive because it truly is. Because 186 miles, well, I can get there and back in a day, no worries at all. So, let's go to Skegness. So here off the east coast of England at Skegness, we can see that there is a commitment to wind energy and that's no surprise because wind is certainly not something they're short of which is probably why this is here. This is the Bentham Dynamics wind turbine, which can see its history quite clear in Erasmus Darwin's turbine. That is basically being a wind capture device. It was discussed in February, we think put up in May, on a three-month trial to give it a go and see how it went lighting the lights of the pier. Now we're talking about Erasmus Darwin, not Charles Darwin. Erasmus Darwin was Charles Darwin's grandfather and he worked with Josiah Wedgwood of the Potteries fame to create a wind turbine. Although we talk about it as if it was a wind turbine, in fact it was a wind capture device because it was a tower of flaps and it directed the wind over the turbine proper and of course the way to increase the output of a turbine is to get more wind across it. So what Ventum did was they took that idea and they ran with it and updated it and if you look at the Ventum wind turbine what you'll see is a nested group of hyperbolic funnels. They get closer together the further up the top they get and they get shorter as they get closer together. What it means is that any wind turbine is going to fit in there. It doesn't really matter if it's a horizontal wind turbine and that's exactly what Ventum did. They took a normal horizontal wind turbine and turned it on its side. Equally, a vertical wind turbine will do the job and that's because the Ventum wind turbine, like the Darwin wind turbine, is not in itself a wind turbine. It is in fact a wind capture. I suppose the first thing is that this concept of wind power harnessing outperforms traditional wind turbines of the same diameter and aerodynamic characteristics under the same wind conditions and it delivers significantly higher output at reduced cost. Its first innovative feature really I suppose is the elimination of the tower mounting. The Ventum is only 2.4 meters tall. Tower mounted turbines are large, mechan mechanically complex and the enormous towers that they use to hoist them into the sky are the hallmark of today's wind power industry. Unfortunately, they're also expensive, unwieldy, inefficient and hazardous to people and wildlife. One of the innovative features of this kind of wind turbine or wind capture device is that it captures wind flow through an omnidirectional intake and therefore there's no need for passive or active yaw control. It accelerates the flow within the shrouded Venturi system and it's subsequently expanded and released into the environment. This provides solutions to all of the major problems that have so far undermined the wind industry, such as low turbine reliability, intermittency issues, and adverse environmental and radar impact. I suppose the question is, although all of that is true, why not build a bigger wind turbine? For an individual wind turbine, the data shows that bigger is better because it enjoys the economies of scale. But for a wind turbine project, it's a very different story. For individual projects, the mantra nearer is better, winds out over bigger is better. So having single large wind turbines somewhere where you have to transmit the power is actually disadvantageous for lots of little wind turbines near to where the power is being used. And this is where things like the Ventum wind turbine and the Darwin wind turbine are going to win over. Okay, it's 8 o'clock at night. We set off at 8 o'clock this morning, so 12 hours, Skegness and back. Now, there is something else I wanted to point out about the advantages of these kind of turbines. And that is, you can't always go bigger. I mean, if you're a 25-year-old male, the first thing that pops into your head is bigger is always better, but it necessarily isn't. Think about it, if you're trying to put a turbine on your house, there's a size to which you can go. Beyond that, 
well, you're going to get stopped by planning permission, but something like a vented turbine, like the Ventum, is going to sidestep that issue. Of course, the other thing is, you live in an urban environment, and these kind of turbines collect the wind from all the way around, and that's a huge advantage you gain by generating nearer is better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.